So what is our program today? It is surviving norovirus. And this is not just a cruise ship issue, and that is for sure. I want you to know that norovirus goes by many names, stomach flu, food poisoning, norovirus, gastroenteritis. We're going to talk about this a little bit more, but if you think it just happens on cruise ships, boy, are we wrong. So hang in there with me, and we're going to learn about how prevalent is norovirus. It is amazing that there are over 21 million cases 71,000 of the individuals who contract this are hospitalized. And of that, over 91,000 will require some kind of an emergency room visit, usually for dehydration. It's always startling to me when I see that 800 deaths are an effect of this virus. So I think this is a very important thing for us to talk about. And I want you to know as we go through all this, we're going to get more information, but I want you to think about this isn't just cruise ships, schools, nursing homes, assisted living, restaurants. It is something that all of us need to know about. Even if you work in home care and you're a home care provider, this is something that you need to take note and listen to. It is a foodborne illness as well, that we have foodborne illness outbreaks in the United States. And it's responsible for more than 50% of the outbreak. So I think that we often forget about that. And we're going to talk about dietary workers and food preparation as we go through the program. It costs $2 billion a year um, for the health care in lost productivity and other issues. And I'm going to go over some of those numbers with you right now. This does not... Um, I want you to know that this does not measure the impact on the public perception of your facility if you have an outbreak. And that is, what is the cost to you for marketing? Always amazing. There's a very interesting fact sheet that came out about the financial burden of norovirus. And if you're a nursing home administrator or a financial person with an organization, this has tremendous impact on you. The financial burden of norovirus to a facility is $65,190. That's an outbreak to a facility. That includes, so that you know, bed closures, additional lab testing, infected workers, increasing nursing care for the infected patients, and the infection control team expenses. That's your gowns, gloves, masks, all of those things, plus the follow-up. Um, prevention is the key to reducing this and increased surface disinfection following, now get this, following the detection of a single case of norovirus was found to offset costs by as much as $40,040. Why are long-term care facilities so susceptible? And when we say, again, long-term care facilities, we're talking about assisted living, independent living, anywheres where we have congregate living, basically. And it's because it's so communal. And we have so many social activities and so multi-touched items. So if you just think about our activities, where people are utilizing common areas, and you'll see about contact precautions and how this is transmitted, you can understand that. Congregate meals, number two. We already talked about this being a foodborne illness as well. So let's think about that issue as why we're so affected in this uh, arena. I think this is a very interesting situation, and that is wherever we're treating residents with dementia in adult daycare, at homes, wherever, we have to recognize that hand washing is a major problem for these folks because they don't remember to wash their hands. Even with constant reminder with a short-term memory lapse, this is a huge issue. And also, contact precautions for somebody in a memory care facility are very difficult to keep somebody in their room and not out and about. So these are all issues as why long-term care or health care facilities are so susceptible. Let's move on to clinical symptomology, or what are the symptoms? And I think what's most interesting about this is the very short incubation period. And it's usually only 12 to 48 hours after exposure that someone will come down with clinical symptoms. So one thing is this helps us in some ways to get an idea that we have something happening very quickly. And the common symptoms of this are acute onset of vomiting, watery, non-bloody diarrhea, abdominal cramping, and nausea. I want to mention that uh, recently I was working with a facility that had an outbreak of norovirus, 
And the staff were very, um, very um, clear that the vomiting and diarrhea was really uncomfortable, but nothing like the abdominal cramping, and it sure gave them a sense of empathy for the residents and what they had been dealing with. The other thing is you're not always going to see it, but you can look for low-grade fevers. People may complain of headache, myalgia, some muscle pain, and a uh, lot of fatigue with this. So those are the clinical symptoms. Most important, and I think this is an area that's often missed that I want to stress, and that is 30% of infected individuals do not develop any symptoms at all. So if you look across your staff and your residents, 30% of these infected individuals may not have any nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, malaise, anything else. So, but they are still shedding and they can still uh, infect others. So really important to understand that hand washing that we're gonna beat to death before the end of this program. Let me ask you if you know how long the symptoms last. Well, it's usually about 24 to 48 hours, but it, 24 to 72 is not outside the range at all. And that is with most individuals recovering completely at the end of the 72-hour period. Maybe a little bit of residual because of the vomiting and diarrhea may have a little bit of fatigue or weakness, but this is usually pretty much the way the course runs.